All right, thanks very much. Thanks for the opportunity to speak today. Title of the talk is Sonoval's Vega Ultrasound Platform. No sonographer, no problem. Uh, that last bit will make sense in a few slides. So as you know, there's a, a number of different ways to image preclinical animal models of disease. And Sonoval's technology is based on ultrasound. It's spun out of the lab of Paul Dayton at UNC Chapel Hill in North Carolina. And when we set out to do this, we didn't want to just make another conventional ultrasound scanner uh, for the market. We wanted to make something uh, completely different. And so before we started, we, we talked to dozens of core facility directors at academic uh, research centers and uh, a handful in uh, pharma as well. <clears throat> and we asked them, you know, which systems are you using and why, and which systems are, are not getting used and why. And uh, overwhelmingly, across the board, the optical systems were used far and away the most often in terms of number of scans done per day or week. And we drilled down a little bit and asked, you know, why, why was that? And it, uh, it comes down to these three, uh, three things that they kept saying. And they're not listed in any uh, particular order here, but the first is that it needs to provide a uh, clear biological uh, answer to a question that, that researchers are asking. So that's thing number one. Uh, thing number two is it needs to be an, ef an efficient use of time. So research dollars are really hard to come by for these labs and multiple mouse throughput or multiplexing animals is uh, incredibly important. So you get more science done per hour. And finally, the easy to use, easy to operate. Uh, everybody wants tools that are easy to use, uh, but wh why does that matter? Well, it matters because on the core facility side, if an instrument requires one of your staff members to operate every time someone wants to do a study, that creates a bottleneck, especially if multiple systems want to be used at once and a technician is required on a, on a different scanner. But with the optical systems, you basically, you train someone for a few minutes and, and any biologist can, can figure this out. You, know, you, you open the door, you, you put the animals in, you, you set the software up and you press go. And we wanted to make our Vega, which is our ultrasound-based product, uh, mimic all of these uh, characteristics. So how do you make one of these? Well, to start, let's, let's talk about conventional ultrasound. So this is, this is the clinical scenario uh, where you've got a sonographer, you've got an ultrasound transducer, and you've got a patient. And they're coupled together and you're able to produce a two-dimensional image. If you move the transducer around and angle it in different ways, you produce a different image. And the same is true in the preclinical world where this is a mouse, as you can see. Uh, as, as you move the transducer around over the mouse, you're looking at different organs. And it's, it's somewhat different uh, where it's, it's a grad student instead of a sonographer usually. Uh, but the, the point is the same in which you have to you use a device to position this transducer looking down at an animal. And when I was a graduate student, for the first several years, I was, I was doing this. And I, every time I had to do these studies, I thought, you know, there, there has to be a, a better way. And there is a better way. And that's what we've done at Sonoval. We've designed a system that is more like a photocopier than it is like this precise tool that you need to learn to use. The tool gets out of the way of the biologist. You do not have to be an expert in ultrasound to get data off our system. That's, that's the objective. So how do we build a photocopier for mice? This is essentially all there is to it. There's a robot that moves around a transducer underneath an animal. It looks up at the animal. So again, the biologist doesn't have to touch it and it stitches together a bunch of two-dimensional images and forms a three-dimensional image from that. The animal is laying on an acoustically transmissive membrane and a little bit of water or gel couples uh, the animal to the sound. This is the type of image that you end up with. In a minute, you end up with a three-dimensional whole body image that looks something like this. So these are two slices that are taken out of a three-dimensional block of data. And the reason this is cool is everyone in this room, there's, there's not a single radiologist among us, but everyone in this room can point to the mouse's tail, the legs, the liver, the bladder, the kidneys, the spine. Everybody can just see those. You understand this image, these images here, without any training at all. And that's one of the things that ultrasound is traditionally not good at. Most biologists or most non-ultrasound nerds look at ultrasound and say, I don't know what I'm looking at. The, the phrase is, it's a polar bear in a snowstorm. But there's no polar bears or snowstorms here. You can tell it's a mouse, you can tell what you're looking at, and you have anatomical context for your disease that has evolved over time. And so 
that's, uh, I guess, the real value of, of doing this is you get, because, because the transducer is not being coupled with gel and over a, an abnormal terrain of the body, uh, when you flip it upside down, you're able to do this because the mouse has no idea that it's being imaged. The transducer is being manipulated around underneath it, and you end up with data that looks like this. The previous slide showed anatomical imaging, but we also can, can do uh, functional imaging here, vascular imaging. So microvasculature down to about 100 microns across can be imaged on our system using microbubble contrast agents. And uh, this is useful particularly for people interested in angiogenesis. So you can look at uh, blood vessel density over time, that's the top row there, BVD. Uh, or morphology, the blood vessel morphology, BVM. So this is the same tumor evolving over time. You can tell that it's not responding to the therapy here because the tumor is getting larger, but more than just volume changes. So if this was a subcutaneous tumor, you could measure that with calipers. But what do you, what do you get from this image? First of all, you know when necrosis begins to onset. So, so you can look at you know, this darker region in the interior of the tumor. It starts to get increasingly dark. That indicates that the microbubbles are not getting there. That's a region of necrosis. You can study the, the effect uh, of a drug or, or a lack of effect of the drug on uh, normalizing the vasculature. So you can track individual vessels over time. That's what those arrows are on the bottom. And you can tell that this, this vasculature is not only not normalizing, it's getting increasingly chaotic. Uh, the vessels are getting more dilated and more tortuous. And, and you can visualize that uh, very readily in these images. And so that's another example of how you might use the Vega technology. A third application here, cardiac imaging. Uh, very, ultrasound is heavily used in the clinic for cardiac imaging. Uh, in the preclinical world, it's used for both studying cardiovascular disease and, uh, and also studying cardiotoxicity of various drugs. As I've mentioned, our, our system is different from conventional preclinical systems in that you're not holding onto a transducer, you're not required to manipulate it and couple it to, to the animal in, in a precise way. You put the animal on the membrane and you press go. And the advantage there is the, the system can, can sort of find the heart for you. You don't have to do that yourself because the heart is the only thing in a mouse that is moving at uh, a mouse heart frequency, right? Many beats, of, many beats a second. And so after you do that, you end up with this type of heat map here, and you could do your targeted acquisition, including a four-dimensional image. Four-dimensional image here, you're looking at a, a three-dimensional image, the heart, uh, over time. So it's beating many times a second, but you're able to stitch those all together into this uh, and go anywhere in the heart at any point in the cardiac cycle and visualize valves, visualize, uh, visualize the heart's ejection fraction and all that, all in 4D. The magic of this is you don't have to be very precise about the angle that the transducer couples to the tissue at the time of acquisition. That's one of the major sources of user variability or inter-user variability with uh, conventional tools. With this 4D approach, uh, you just press go, and, and when you have the four-dimensional volume, you can uh, analyze it later and, and, and do it exactly the same every time. Some people say, you know, I, I don't, I'm, I'm doing M-mode now. I don't really want to change what I'm doing. That's fine. We offer M-mode. If that's what you want to do, we, we offer M-mode and the ability to, to trace uh, the different uh, layers in the image to, to produce the metrics of interest. So uh, that's another application that we offer. Liver disease is another one. It's a hot area of research right now, especially in pharma. Uh, fibrosis, there's no FDA-cleared drug for liver fibrosis currently. And um, there's a study, this is from a study that was done on our platform where um, the stiffness or fibrosis in, in a liver, a number of different uh, liver disease models, is quantified over time. So you can, you can measure that. Basically, the speed that sound moves through the tissue changes as the tissue gets stiffer. And, Fibrosis causes this stiffening of the liver, and you can, you can track that non-invasively in, in, in minutes uh, from an individual animal across the whole you know, 3D volume of the liver. And it tracks uh, with, with histology there. You can see this is a NASH model. That's the box plot on the right. That's a diet-induced uh, liver disease model. And then CCL4 there on the left, that's uh, carbon tetrachloride. That's a common uh, analog for alcohol-induced liver disease. But in any event, uh, the, the ultrasound is able to uh, visualize this within uh, weeks of starting the disease. So we, this is just a preliminary study, and, and this is a product that we're going to be rolling out over the next, uh, over the next months. Finally, finally here, the uh, application five, hybrid modality imaging. So we mentioned with ultrasound, you know, traditional ultrasound, you have this transducer that's looking down on the, on the, on the subject. Well, what happens when you get that out of the way and the transducer is looking up? At, uh, at, the, at the tissue. Well, 
Once it's out of the way, then you can put additional modalities on top looking down to collect data simultaneously on more than one animal uh, at a time. And so uh, the first slide there was about the, the, what is the most popular imaging modality right now is bioluminescence uh, largely. That's what we've done here. We've put a, a CCD camera, a very sensitive CCD camera over, over the imaging bays looking down while the ultrasound is looking up and you're able to acquire these data simultaneously. Um, many people say, you know, I, I don't need that. I already have a um, bioluminescence system and that's fine. You know, a Vega fits very nicely next to a conventional IVA system and you can transfer the, the, the subjects between to create this hybrid modality. But if you want to get it all at one time or, or it's time to upgrade your, your bioluminescence system, this is uh, definitely something worth looking into. It allows uh, multiple different features of the disease to be explored simultaneously. So you get your, your soft tissue from the ultrasound. So perfect tumor borders, regardless of where they are uh, in the animal. You get accurate tumor contours for orthotopic tumors, subcutaneous tumors, tumors that aren't labeled with, uh, with some sort of compound you can get uh, with, with the ultrasound. You get the vessel morphology that I mentioned, uh, accurate tumor volumes, and then vessel density, and then finally the molecular data, all of that within one acquisition. This is data here on the right from a orthotopic pancreatic tumor uh, imaged earlier this year. And so that's all I've got right now. No sonographer, no problem. It's, it's clear what I mean by that now probably. Um, you don't have to be an ultrasound expert to use our device. That, that our goal has been to get the the tool out of the way of the biologist so they can just get to their data and move on. And, um, and that's been our objective from the start. So I'm Ryan, uh, this is Kevin, he's, he's here today as well, um, VP of Sales and Marketing. We'd love to hear from you. Here's our email address, hit us up, and uh, thanks again for, uh, for the opportunity to speak.